Hi everyone, so in this video we're going to be taking a look at our blend controller and specifically focusing on how you set the operation of buttons and pots and what's available to you to make the device work in the way that you'd like it to work. In particular, we're going to be looking at these functions when using Paradisos. So this screen in front of us is showing the blend controller for the Paradiso that we're currently running. To get into the configuration settings, you simply need to hit this little settings icon over here. This will open up its dashboard, so then you need to click on configuration. This will then present us with the option to set numerous different parameters within the Paradiso, but in this video we're particularly going to be looking at the puts and buttons, button relations and the DC inputs and DC outputs. First, let's take a look at pots and buttons. So I'll click on that. This should open up a screen that will provide us with the display of the Paradiso itself. And it allows us to set how each of these buttons operates. So underneath all of these buttons there, that are actually physically there on your Paradiso, there's a drop down list. If you click on this, it provides you with all the options of how the button can turn on or off. If you choose intelligent, which is often called intelligent lever key, it means that a short tap of the button will toggle it on or off, and a long push and hold of the button um, will mean that it's momentary. Then the other settings like momentary and toggling are all very self-explanatory. These settings are available for all the buttons on your Paradiso. The switches that are beneath the pots only have an on off limited or full range option. What this means is if it's set in limited mode, the volume control can't be turned off. It might be that you have director's talkback on one of these talkback circuits and you don't want your commentator to be able to turn this important audio source all the way off. If this is the case, you should set it to limited and then it doesn't matter how much the commentator attempts to turn down the volume pot, it won't fully attenuate. Again, these switches are available for each of the volume pots on the Paradiso and can all be set individually. Then down here, you also have a pan locked function. On these volume control knobs on the Paradiso, if you push them down and turn them left or right, the audio source in the commentator's ear will pan. Some people may not want the commentator to be able to pan their audio, and therefore this pan function locked means all the sources on commentator A here can't pan the audio source themselves. And this is global for commentator A, commentator B, and for commentator C. Next is button relations. Button relations defines what happens when one button is clicked and then what happens to all the other buttons on the Paradiso. Everything is interlocked so any button can be made to affect any other button. So first of all we select which button we want to be looking at. So here I'm going to select commentator A's mic. This tells us that this is the button that's going to be on and what happens to all the other buttons on the Paradiso. At the moment, as you can see, all the other buttons on the Paradiso have come up and they're all saying not affected. But underneath all of these buttons, there's a drop down box. And this gives us the option of deciding what happens to the button. In this case, when you turn the mic on or off button, on or off. One of the options is momentarily on. So therefore, if this button was already off, it wouldn't turn on when you turn this button on. If it was already off, it would be momentarily off. So whilst this button's on, it will be off. But then when you turn this button on again, because it's momentarily off, this one will turn back on. The last option is off delatch. And this means that if this button was on and you then turn this button on, this will turn off and it will stay off. This is an especially useful feature if you have an open mic 
or your main broadcast mic and the commentators have been talking off air on a talkback circuit and it may be that they want to turn themselves back on air knowingly rather than accidentally finding themselves on air after coming off a talkback circuit. For every single button here we can adjust all other buttons. So come off the controlling button and then you can find another button to select. Then it shows us already what settings have been applied to these buttons. Hopefully those tips help you navigate button relations. Then back down here we have DC inputs and DC outputs. These are basically GPIOs. So when we select one of these, you're presented with a very useful graphical interface showing us the D connector from the rear of the Paradiso and also which pins are selected. So there are four GPIO circuits on a Paradiso and any of the four can be set to either inputs or outputs. We'll look at the inputs first here. First you can select which input you're interested in. I've just selected input 1, which is pin 1 on the D9. Each input is effectively going to be associated with a switch. So we can first select whether this GPI input is looking for a short momentary pulse, whether it's toggling on or off. Basically it can be set to however you want the external circuit to work. Then select which buttons are affected. Also, in this drop-down list, you have every possible option that you may want for a GPI associated with any button. You can select any of these and one GPI input can affect more than one button if you wish. If you really wanted it to, it could affect all of them simultaneously. If you head on over to DC outputs, these are GPOs. Over here by default, all the GPOs are inputs, but you can easily turn them on to become outputs on this screen here by clicking these buttons. As you select them, they're highlighted by a pink colour around here, and this means that this button is the one you're currently selecting what happens to on the commentary box. When you first turn a button on, all its associated controls by all the switches are turned off. And if you want to switch to basically control that output, i.e. when you turn that switch on, you get a GP output on that pin and you just tell Glen Controller to connect a button to that control. You can have more than one button connected to a single output or you can just have one. It's entirely up to you. So, hopefully this video has covered everything you want to know about the use of pots and buttons within Glen Controller. But as always, don't hesitate to contact us if there's anything else you want to know. Thanks for watching. Bye.